Ishmael Shah. Barakata Yahweh Shah. Barakata Yahweh. Barakata Yahweh. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Right, and this is speaking of the Israelites, the elect, coming down from the ships, because as you read the scriptures, we're gonna be beamed up. And what does Paul say? We're gonna be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, all right? We're gonna have a ceremony, we're gonna be crowned, we're gonna sip wine with Yahweh Shai, we're gonna praise the Lord, okay? We're gonna rejoice, we're gonna sing the song of Moses, which is victory over the heathen, all right? As we watch Babylon burn, all right? in the earth in total chaos, all right? But after some time, we're gonna come down, all right? We're not gonna stay up in the chariots with those new bodies, all right? We're gonna eventually come down for the purpose of what? Conquering and enslaving the heathen and also purging out the rebels of our people who are still left, all right? Who refuse to bow to the will of Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai, all right? And it says in the next verse, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Meaning what? The law, statute, commandments will be written in our inward part. So what does that mean? No more sin. As the scriptures say, sin is what separated us from our power, and our power separated from us. It was our sins, our disobedience. But this time the Lord has promised us the better service in which the law, statutes, and commandments will be written in our inward part. So what does that mean? No more sin. See, the only way you heathen were able to have dominion over us is because of sin. But once death is conquered and we sin no more, what does that mean? We will never be separated from our power ever again. And you notice it says the holy city, New Jerusalem, and then it equates that all right, as the tabernacle of God being with men. Now, what did the temple, all right, in Jerusalem represent? It represented the direct presence of the Most High on the earth, all right? So now, we won't need a physical temple, all right? The order will go and issue forth from Yahweh Shai and the 144,000. That is the fulfillment of the tabernacle of David. Now, what does the scripture say about the tabernacle of David? All right, Zechariah 12 and 8. And that day shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David. All right, because there will be rank and order amongst us, but even those who are less, all right, amongst us in the kingdom of heaven will be mighty. You see, and the house of David, which is the 144,000, shall be as God, as the angel of Yahweh before them. And who's the angel of Yahweh? Yahweh Shai. So we're going to be a force to be reckoned with, all right? We will no longer sin, so you heathen will not be able to stop us. Going back to the time of the Israelites when they were going to possess the land of Canaan and the Lord was with them. Now, how was the Lord with them via that angel, all right? That chariot that followed them, that was with them. You see, that power will now be in us under Yahweh Shai, and we will come onto the earth, all right, and conquer. When you read the story of Joshua and the Lord was with our people, our forefathers, they were unstoppable. That's why the heathen had to try and cast stumbling blocks to take us off our course so that we can be separated from our power because they understood all right, what they were dealing with. But in that day, you will not be able to cast any stumbling blocks <laughs> in front of the nation of Israel because we will be perfect. You see, let's get the book of Judah. All right, chapter 5 and 17. And while as they sin not before their God, they prospered because the God that hated the iniquity was with them. You see? But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, which is the law, statutes, and commandments, they were destroyed in many battles, very sore, and were led captives into a land that was not theirs. And the temple of their God was cast to the ground and their cities were taken by the enemies. Well, this time around, there won't be any chance <laughs> that we will sin because the laws will then be implemented in our inward parts. We will be programmed to keep the laws. So no stumbling block, no anything you heathen will throw at us will work. 
all right? Furthermore, we're going to be an angelic force as we come down from those ships. You see? Let's get the book of Micah, the seventh chapter. You see? So we're going to prosper forever and ever and ever, man. Could you imagine that? This is Micah, chapter 7 and 16. The nation shall see and be confounded at all their might. They shall lay their hand upon their mouth. Their ears shall be deaf. You see? They're going to be confounded. They're going to have their hands on their mouth like, whoa, when they see New Jerusalem come down. Because when we come down, we ain't coming down to play any games. <laughs> what are we going to do? Because you got to understand, there's still going to be people on the earth. You see? The elites are going to be in those bunkers. You see? Along with their slaves and the different uh, uh, people. Uh, scattered throughout the planet earth and we're gonna come down and what set up order man it says in verse 17 they shall lick the dust like a serpent and they shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth they shall be afraid of the lord our god and shall fear because of thee you see and we're going to be absolutely perfect we're going to be angelic we're going to be a force to be reckoned with all right, and there's not going to be any way we will ever sin again from that point. Okay, we're going to purge you rebels out. All right, and New Jerusalem is going to set up shop on the planet Earth, and we're going to take you heathen down. All right, because when you read Revelation, the sixth chapter, in the 14th verse, it says, And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Now, what is this speaking about? This is speaking of the major destruction that is coming to Babylon the Great War around the earth and the chariots Because once that happens The elect will be beamed up You see? Beamed up and changed As the scriptures say in Matthew 24 and 31 He's going to gather his elect From the four winds of the earth That is going to be synonymous with this great destruction You see? That's coming to the earth And it's going to move islands this will be a time like never before, a destruction like never before. Nagasaki and Hiroshima will have nothing on the destruction of Babylon the Great, man. And it says, And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. What is this speaking about? Those bunkers. You see? There's still going to be people alive on the earth. As you read Revelation, the 18th chapter, it tells you particular nations that see the destruction of Babylon are going to what? Cast dust on their head, meaning they're going to be in a state of mourning. So what are these people going to say who are in those mountains, in those caves, in those bunkers? And said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. You see? And that's speaking of Yahweh Shai and from the wrath of the Lamb. And what did he tell his followers? You're going to sit on thrones along with me and judge. Verse 17. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? So as they're in those rocks and mountains and things of such, hiding, scared, all right, we are then going to come down, New Jerusalem in a perfected state, and what are we going to do? This is Jeremiah 16 and 16. It says, Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith Yahweh, and they shall fish them. And we have fished. We're currently fishing now. But there's another side to our story. See, right now we're lowly. We're afflicted. You know, but we have the word, right? The Heavenly Father has sent the comforter from on high so that we can go out and preach. All right? But afterward... What did he say? Said the Lord, I will send for many hunters and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and from out of the holes of the rocks. And this is what was going to happen when New Jerusalem come down from those chariots, man. We're going to come down. All right. We're going to purge out the rebels. We're going to take down you heathen, that rod of iron. And ultimately, what is the plan? All of you heathen will then be subject to the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. This is Zechariah chapter 14 and 16. 
And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which came against Jerusalem shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, all right, Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, and keep the Feast of Tabernacles. It will be in order. You see, after we beat you down, all right, after we purge out the Edomites, this is going to be the order. You heathen will have to follow our laws. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the king, Yahweh, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. So we're going to have a spiritual harp system. You see, as Esau has his heart where he can modify the weather, well, we'll be able to do that on the right hand side. And this shows you that the heathen will not have any partaking of that new covenant because if they were a part of the new covenant, there wouldn't even be a chance of them not going up to do the Feast of Tabernacles because the laws would be in them, right? Verse 18, and if the family of Egypt go not up and come not that have no rain, there shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. Because what does it say in Micah the fourth chapter? The law is going to go forth of Jerusalem. All right. New Jerusalem, which is Yahweh Shai and the 144,000. All right. And who's the king of Salem? Melchizedek. That will be the high priest. And we will be priest under that order. And we will rule out of Jerusalem in a perfected state. You see? So the Lord is going to smite the heathen that... You know, follow not our customs, man. And this shall be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. So this is ultimately New Jerusalem ruling on the planet Earth. Rock that you have a shot. Rock that you have a shot. Rock that you have a shot.